Um, early in November, uh, the uh, United Nations had COP26 on climate change. And uh, one of the things I find particularly shocking about it is the argument that basically, well, everybody knows this is a problem, so we just have to do something. And yep. in The Economist, Zanny Minton Beddoes, editor-in-chief, wrote it this way. What's more, the science, diplomacy, activism, and public opinion that support cops make them the be best mechanism in the world has to come to terms with a fundamental truth. The dream of a planet of almost 8 billion people all living in material comfort will be unachievable if it is based on economy powered by coal, oil, and natural gas. Until that message sinks in, the task is to bring about bold, prompt action from willing countries in Europe and elsewhere that others cannot frustrate. Forget the science, just slap it to them. You know, I, I just, I'm shocked that, that they're convinced, even without evidence, that we have to go, I don't know, uh, it's not it, quite it, right to say back. It to makes no sense that intelligent people, as as I think the economist uh, writers are, it, it it makes no sense that intelligent people like that can't see the the complete. Put aside again. Put aside the science. Even if you agree with their science, can't see the unbelievable fallacy um, that is involved here. Right. The the the, the idea. Just, just in terms of science and, and in terms of economics, the idea that you can go off uh, fossil fuels fast enough to make a difference by the standard of their models um, and not suffer massively economically is just voodoo. It's just um, wishful thinking. It's, 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 um, it's completely making stuff up. Uh, it has no connection to reality, zero. It, it, it's just not tenable. You know, if you look at the Great Britain right now, they exactly. are going to struggle uh, to, to, to warm the cities in winter this year, and prices are going to go through the roof, and, and they've got real problems, and they're becoming going to become more and more dependent on the Russians and all of that, all the bad stuff. And yet they're sitting there at The Economist magazine, and saying, no, we're still using too much fossil fuel. We need to use less. And what's the alternative? More windmills in the North Sea, where it's been shown that the wind actually doesn't blow quite that much. More uh, uh, solar panels in one of the places on Earth that is most cloudy. Um, and, and of course, solar panels don't work at, at, at night. And of course, the batteries to store the electricity so you can get it at night by their own standards, use more carbon to produce and to create than, uh, than it does burning, um, burning ga uh, natural gas. So by every standard, by their own standards, by their own math, by their own science, by their own technology, by their own everything, they're complete and utter liars or completely blinded by the need to fit in and, and say what's expected and be like everybody else and not get Greta to wag her finger at them. I, I mean, they admit that they're having problems because of this windmill policy. Yeah. Yet they say, yeah. we need more windmills. Let's keep going. Yeah, but, but this is, look, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like politicians in America saying, Yep. I mean, uh, there's no question that if you think about it, the national debt is a drag on the economy. Let's increase it. Yeah. You know, uh, the national debt is unsustainable, but let's increase it. I mean, uh, both Republicans and Democrats say that. Yes. The Democrats right. who are more centrist to think the national debt actually matters still vote to spend more and more and more. Republicans who, when they're in the opposition, think the national debt is a real, real problem as soon as they get into power, spend more and raise the national debt. So uh, the ability of people to completely evade reality in order to fit in or in order to sustain power or in order to satisfy their whims or in order to just, I don't know, I, you know it's hard for me to understand how a mind like that works, uh, is, is, just, is just infinite because here we have smart people 
that have to know that what they're saying is complete nonsense. I mean, there was a, there was a really good op-ed somewhere, it might've been the Wall Street Journal somewhere else, by I think the president of Kenya, Uganda, one of those African countries, um, basically saying, look people, if you force us to move to uh, so-called renewable energy, or as Alex Epstein likes to call them, unreliable energy sources, we're going to stay poor forever. There's no way an African country can rise up from poverty using unreliables. This is the Africans telling them this. It doesn't matter. They, they just are blind to it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen to it. They, they, they completely self-belude themselves, completely, um, in their quest. I don't know to what, to fit in, to... to, to, uh, to, to, to Follow the religion, I guess. It's a religion now, the religion of climate change, the religion of, 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 of uh, hatred of fossil fuels. And there must be voters within the UK who hate what's going on, yep. but everyone supports that policy. So what do you do? I mean, it's not like you vote for the guy that says, hey, tear the windmills down and let's, no. uh, let's bring in all the coal, I clean mean, coal we can. I think Brits were surprised that Boris Johnson was as far left as he was on these issues. And, and his whole party voted with him. So um, these are the conservatives who are bringing about the death of energy in the, in the UK. The UK is becoming a net importer of energy from France because the French of all people have the common sense, the decency to, have, to use nuclear power. Exactly. Uh, and they have, they have a, a surplus and, and therefore uh, they can export electricity to the UK, but it's not particularly efficient under the channel to export electricity, but that's actually what they're doing. So it, it's just, it's just bizarre. The Germans doubling up on, so, so they shut down the nuclear power plants, yep. which caused them to have to restart coal power plants, all with the goal of going to windmills and solar panels. Uh, that resulted in increased CO2 emissions, not decreased. And they're doubling up on that. And the biggest opposer of nuclear power in the world right now are the Germans, who, who's just lived through a failed experiment. And every political party who ran for the German election recently was against using nuclear power. So it's, it's like reality doesn't matter to these people. It has no standing in their mind. It, it's mind boggling. It, it, it's... There's just no reality. Facts don't matter. This is Plato on steroids in some politicized, weird, unnatural combination. You know, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's bizarre. I, I cannot, really cannot explain it. I, I, I agree with you completely. All I can say is I know he may not have a lot new to say. Bring Alex back again. It's yep. a message yep. that just isn't out there very much. Other than, no, other than him, no. Well, the nice thing is, as Alex has pointed out, is there is an entire, seems to be an entire movement now talking about this. A lot of people talking about nuclear. There are a lot of new authors talking about um, the, the impossibility of, of, of going, uh, uh, of getting rid of fossil fuels. So there are more authors that are picked up on the themes that Alex is proposing. There are more CEOs of relatively small uh, uh, oil companies and oil and gas companies who are standing up. There, there is an impact. It's just, you know, it's just tiny at this point relative to everything else. Yeah. It's very much. difficult to compete with every school and every university and every intellectual and every politician. And, very and, and that's the real problem, right? They're training the kids before they have any yeah. idea what any of it means, they're brainwashing them in effect to say, oh, you know, climate change is going to kill us. They're, they're, they're training kids to do two things. One is they're training them with bad ideas and they're training them how not to think. And that combination is pretty deadly. Thank you. Luckily, kids don't listen to their teachers always. So there's always hope with kids. <laughs> there is that hope. Yes. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, Subscribestar, Locals, and just making an appropriate contribution. 
uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.